Welcome to Desk Geek. This beautiful image you're seeing here is brought to you by the Google Chromecast. TV streaming device by Google. This has YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, Spotify, HBO Now, CBS, Pandora, and many, many more applications that you can use it for. But you guys know that I'm a huge fan of Roku devices. So how does this stack up? Well, obviously there is a upgraded version of this Chromecast called the Ultra, which offers you the 4K support. This particular device goes up to 1080p. There are lots of apps on here, Showtime, Sling, Twitch, Red Bull, all of the kind of uh, branded separate channels out there, as well as you can cast your phone directly to this device itself and your phone is your remote in this box you do not get a remote control at all and what you do get is this round dongle looking thing it's kind of an odd design when you look at the stick like roku has or even the amazon stick and you compare that which are their lower end devices to the chromecast which is a circle and then you realize there's really no advantage to it being a circle at all except perhaps it gives them more real estate to pack some more power within this little device but I'm not really seeing that in full use now it's plenty snappy enough and I'll show you what this interface looks like I select it and boom now you can see my actual phone screen and I can go back this is the menu that I went to to cast the screen which is a pretty neat feature you're not going to see with a Roku or anything else to be able to mirror your phone directly to your television now this plays a very important role not only if you're trying to show your photos or some other apps could you utilize this but you are able to utilize apps that are not natively supported one of the big ones being Amazon Prime which happens to be a service that I utilize quite a bit for video content and unfortunately they don't have a native app for it here so my only option is to cast my screen go into the Amazon Prime uh, movies uh, TV app and mirror it there which you lose some quality on when you do through that way um, if it doesn't have a native supportive app, I've noticed the quality is very dependent on your type of device and they even mention this and its compatibility with Chromecast. So I assume if you have a Pixel or things like that, it may work a little better, but it will tell you when you're casting certain things that this device is not um, set up for this type of casting, so you may have some resolution issues. So outside of that though, if you are a fan of Netflix, you'll have that. The Google Play Movies and TV, if you get a lot of content through there, you will have access. You can obviously watch Twitch through this, and I love that it has native Plex support in there. And Google Photos, Google Slides, and those type of things. You also have a bunch of apps that you can discover here. ESPN, Comedy Central, Hulu, Nickelodeon, all of these different shows, YouTube Gaming, UFC, you can add into your subscription here. So as far as what it contains within it, it's a good selection. Again, missing Amazon for me is a big deal for you. If you don't have that prime content, it won't matter to you, uh, but definitely keep that in mind because Roku does have native support for Amazon. Under the discover setting here, you can see this is just more things that you can add to your device. It's very snappy and responsive. There are times when I've noticed lag or I've had issues connecting. It especially happens with the Apple device. My wife has when she's trying to connect, will periodically have some latency or issues. But for the most part, it's a very usable device. Keep in mind, if you're going to stream something that does not have a native app support, like if we do the Amazon one, which I will show you now. So keep in mind, if you're going to use something that does not have native support within the app, like Prime Video here, and then I will play a Prime Video just for a second here to show you. My phone is now completely tied up. If I exit out of this because I'm using the cast functionality, it's going to exit out of streaming this show, which is going to create a major issue if you want to do anything else on your phone. So basically your phone need, would need to be connected to a charger, otherwise it's going to run out of space or run out of battery and your device will not be able to be used for any other functionality because for instance if I go back to home while I'm streaming, it's obviously just going to cast to that to the screen here. So keep in mind while you can do workarounds for non-native apps, it's not going to function 
as well as if it did have a native app, which is definitely a problem. One of the cool features that I want to mention about Chromecast that they built in is in your search functionality here, if I select the search, I have the voice option. Doctor Who. And much like the Amazon Fire or the Roku's voice option, you can then search for TV shows or videos and you don't have to type anything in. So that's neat functionality that they added. And based on my research, they've added a lot of apps over uh, the last few years, including that Plex compatibility, which wasn't always there. So they are continuing to support it. And this is a very cheap device and that's what's gonna attract people to it the most. You can pick it up for $30. So you can get streaming and content to your TV, have one of these devices for $30, which certainly makes it very attractive. If I had the choice and you have the money, I think a Roku is a better option, but certainly the Google device is fun. And the reason why the Roku is a better option, I just think overall it has a better menu system. I think it's faster, snappy, it has more native apps that you can utilize like the Amazon Prime app and content that you can go through and I really just don't like the shape and overall design of a round thing hanging from my TV. It just seems like they were trying to reinvent the wheel with that and just be different by saying look we made it round instead of a stick. Um, but outside of that, you know, it's just Google trying to be different. The menu system and the way you navigate, it's okay. It's not super intuitive. It's not wonderful, but it's not bad either. You can get to where what you want to get to within the device. And again, I do love the ability to mirror my entire phone to the screen, which allows me to do videos like this, which makes it very unique. So overall, would I buy one again? Sure. I think it's a fine device if you understand its limitations. I think you can have a lot of fun with it. Let me know in the comments below what streaming device you prefer. If you have a Google Chromecast and love it and I missed one of the greatest features of it, let me know in the comments below. I've been playing with it for a couple days. It's semi-enjoyable. Probably go back to a Roku. But until next time, get out there and fill your brains.